Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here again from the Heart of the Witches Path YouTube channel. Hope you're having a good day. I totes am. Woohoo! So, uh, Litha is right around the corner, so I figured it's time for us to talk about Litha correspondences. And so if you had some, if you're putting together your own ritual for the first time or rewriting a ritual or something along those lines and need some help with uh, what kind of items correspond with this holiday, then this video is for you. So <laughs> let me tr let me look at my handy dandy notes. Let's start off by talking. Um, actually, let's start off by talking about what is kind of like the themes for Litha. What is Litha all about? So Litha is midsummer in case you didn't know that. It takes place uh, at the, uh, oh gosh, I think it's the, it's the summer, well, it's midsummer, so that's considered, um, the word escapes me, oh my gosh. So winter and Yule are like, they're like the polar opposites solstice. of each other. It's a solstice. Thank you, Muggle Rumi. <laughs> I am so sorry. That word completely just like flew away out of my mind. Oy vey. Good thing the roomie's here listening. <laughs> so, so Litha is when the God in the form of the sun is at his strongest power in power. It is the longest day of the year. And so some themes and magics that we might want to look at for rituals and spell work and things like that surrounding Litha is about abundance and growth, masculine energy, and love magic. So those are some uh, themes and, like I said, magics that you can think about when it comes to writing your ritual or uh, what kind of spell work might you want to work during that particular time. So for instance, you might, for abundance, maybe you want to be working on prosperity magic. Maybe you want to be working on drawing things to you. Um, it's a great time for love magic um, and things like that. So that's what those are for. Now let's talk about stones that go with this particular Sabbath. So Litha, um, as you, you know, we talked, I talked about already how the sun is at its strongest. Um, and so I, of course, have a lot of sun imagery when it comes to correspondence work for Litha. So that being said, uh, a go-to stone for me would be a carnelian, like this sphere. And isn't there some like really groovy markings in this guy? I just kind of, I looked at my, uh, my stones that went with this particular Sabbath and I just kind of went to my sphere shelf and started picking stuff off. So you'll see a lot of spheres here. Um, so, um, along with, um, carnelian, citrine is also a really popular stone for this Sabbath. And this is a citrine, uh, double terminated, uh, a, a wand type thing that I, I use. And so along with that, diamonds, they're a little pricey, but they are a girl's best friend, right? So diamonds, seashells are also a, a popular thing that you could use for litha. That's not exactly a shell, but they're, um, if you're looking at making a Sabbath necklace, uh, like I did, I should have grabbed that, huh? Bummer. Oh, well. Um, Anyhow, shells are something that you could put into your necklace or if you're doing some kind of beaded work. Clear quartz, uh, tiger eye, just like this guy. Isn't he cute? Oh, I love tiger eye. Uh, yellow topaz, gold, silver, peridot, which is um, a traditional birthstone for August. If you're not really familiar with what that stone looks like, it's a pale green stone. And I know that because both my grandmothers and my father, they're all born in August. So that one kind of stuck in my head. Um, also jade, uh, emerald, and finally lapis lazuli, like this sphere here. I'm getting a little better about holding it right. Yay me! <laughs> so those are stones that go along with Litha. Next, 
talk we want to talk about colors so the colors again you can use for decorational purposes for your altar cloth for this particular sabbat and we're looking at orange red and yellow and that kind of reflects back into the carnelian the citrine and things like that that uh, we saw with the stones those colors are all sun colors sun reminiscent colors and so therefore really get put with this particular sabbat now symbols. So if you're looking for decorations or maybe uh, pendants to put on a Sabbath necklace, of course, the sun, super obvious, super popular right there. Um, an oak tree. Sunflowers are another really good representation because there's that sun Im imagery that comes into what the sunflower looks like. Lilies. Love amulets. Uh, seashells, again fire representations so like a flame flame colors again kind of coming back to the colors situation uh sundials and swords bird feathers witches ladders horses cattle satyrs fairies any kind of fire bird so like a phoenix and dragons. Those are all symbols that are associated with the sun. And I like the idea of firebirds because that kind of uh, coincides with the the power of the sun, you know, that the fire and the sun, things like that. Now, if you're looking to plan a feast for Litha, if you're having a Litha ritual and you're doing a feast, then foods that you might want to look at as having for your feast would be like summer fruits and vegetables. So if you have a garden, those first lettuces and things like that that are coming out of the garden, um, strawberries, things like that. Um, ale and mead are very popular. Um, as we go through uh, the Litha also begins the dark half of the year because, as I said, it's the longest day of the year. And so from Litha then to Yule is when we travel the dark half of the year. And so there's a lot of ale and meads that um, you will see as thematic as we go through uh, the dark half of the year. All the um, the harvesting and things like that, putting foods away for for the winter months. Um, other foods are honey cakes. That's a really, really popular um, cake to have. Ice cream, melted cheese dishes, so fondue for two, you know, that kind of thing. Um, mangoes, whipped cream on fruit, red wine, and strawberries. Those are all really popular foods that you can think about incorporating into your After Litha Ritual Feast. Yum! And um, then moving on to goddesses that are associated with this holiday, um, there is a goddess named Litha, uh, Vivian, who kind of goes back to the Arthurian legends, Arthurian, I don't know why I didn't say it right, goodness, uh, the goddess Briad, the Celtic goddess Briad, uh, Sierdwin, Ishtar, Astarte, Aphrodite, Yamana, Oshan, Ain, Frigga, and Freya. So uh, there, there's a lot of uh, love goddesses in there. There's a lot of, of beautiful goddesses in there, young goddesses. So that's kind of like the theme when looking at um, the goddess aspect and what archetypes to look at. Because when we think about the story of the Wheel of the Year at this point, yes, it is the god's height and power. Um, but he diminishes from there. And when we look at it from the goddess standpoint, the goddess is, uh, she's still in her young aspect. And she is um, starting to show with um, in her pregnancy with the new god that will be born at Yule. So she's still that young and vibrant goddess that we saw at Beltane. Now, the gods that are associated with Litha would be Pan, Cernunos, Tammuz, Lu, interesting, um, Balder, Apollo, and Ra. So here we see a lot of the sun deities from the different pantheons. And that, of course, makes sense since the sun is at its height of power. Uh, now, as far as incense that you might want to use for burning during your ritual, you can either purchase uh, incense. And so lavender incenses, sage, musk, 
violet, if you can find that. I think I've seen that before as an incense stick. Lemon and rose. Those are all really popular incenses that you can use during your uh, ritual. Or if you want, I have a real sassy mabassy um, litha incense recipe that I will share with you. Um, and so what I did was I pulled some of the... Uh, the herbs. This recipe calls for herbs in their dried form and also some essential oils. I didn't pull out the oils, but um, I did pull out, I have most of the ingredients for this incense in dried form. So I'll just kind of show you what they look like kind of a thing. So it starts off with two parts sandalwood. Now, unfortunately, sandalwood is the uh, one of the uh, herbs that I don't have currently. So let's talk about at the end of going through the uh, ingredients, let's talk about what I would do if I were going to mix some up for myself, okay? So two parts sandalwood, one part mugwort. And mugwort is a really cool, this is so full. I'm going to hold it up. So here is mugwort. Mugwort's a great uh, protective um, um, herb, and I'm desperately looking for a plant to buy. It has a very light scent, just smelling it, and it's it's really lightweight. It's not a very dense. I'm not going to mess around with this too much because this is as it's a really full container, and I really don't want to spill it all over myself. So, uh, one part mugwort. Okay. Next, we have one part chamomile, and if any of you are tea drinkers, you know what chamomile looks like. They're little flowers that uh, kind of look like a sunflower, almost. They're yellow centers with white, uh, oh, I guess they look more like daisies with white petals, but they're really, really small, and it's a great, it's a great tea. Um, it's great for belly problems, and it's really good to help you get in that mindset to go to sleep. So one part chamomile, one part gardenia petals, and I don't, that's the other one for this recipe that I don't have in a dried form. But if I remember correctly, gardenias are typically white, and they smell really good. I'm kind of bummed that I don't have any, but I don't grow any, and I guess I haven't really come across any to purchase. So, um, next we have, so those would be the, uh, the herbs that are in a dried form. The other three are calling for oils, but I'm going to show you the dried variety, okay? So, the first one there is rose oil, and so here we've got some red rose petals that I harvested here in my home, uh, just Pick those off my rose bush, let them dry, and throw them in my upcycled uh, four cheese Alfredo jar. <laughs> Next, we have lavender oil, and I think many of us are familiar with what lavender looks like. Those beautiful, super fragrant, little purple. Uh, I just, I'm not a huge fan of the smell, but I try. That one's not bad. There's like a couple of different varieties of lavender. One I like, one I don't, and I can never remember which one's which. Meh, oh well. Lavender oil. So a few so a few drops of each of these. A few drops of rose oil. A few drops of lavender oil. And finally, a few drops of yarrow oil. And yarrow is another, this is more yarrow, or this is another plant that I uh, grow here in my home and harvest. Ooh, sorry, I kicked the camera. Oopsie, let's kind of put it back. Uh, uh, yarrow is a really uh, hardy perennial plant that comes in a lot of different colors. And so mine happen to be white. And so they're little clumps of little flowers that, uh, that grow on some kind of spiny, well, not spiny. I don't know if that's a really good word. To describe the leaves. They're really cute though. Super easy. Like I said, they're perennials. Um, they keep coming back year after year, so I never have to buy any. That's the great thing about uh, growing and drying your own herbs is you don't have to buy them. So now for this recipe, like I said, I'm missing sandalwood and I'm missing gardenia. Um, and since sandalwood is such a 
big part of this recipe since it's two parts to one part of all the other dried items. Honestly, what I would probably do, since I have so much yarrow and rose, I would actually forego the sandalwood, obviously, because I don't have it, but I would probably use a part of each of these and either, um, see, I, rose oil is tends to run very expensive. I don't own rose oil, so that's kind of another issue too. So I would use dried roses as one part and I would forego adding any rose oil. So that's how I would kind of get around because, so there was lavender oil, which I have, and yarrow oil. Yeah, see, I don't, e I don't even have yarrow oil either. Um, I don't even know that I've, yeah, I think I have seen it for sale before, but I don't have it. So I would honestly probably just make a dry mixture um, of the the herbs that I have and then and then use that and so a lot of times when you see recipes like that sometimes that's kind of what you have to do you have to look at what you have on hand and and move forward accordingly uh, especially if they're um, a unique item that you can't really find um, because like I said I think I've seen yarrow oil before I could probably even make my own if I wanted to but honestly I kind of like the idea of having an all dry mixture um so yeah I mean to each their own whatever works best for you is obviously what you should be doing now um I think in my earlier videos that I've done talking about correspondences for Sabbaths, I mentioned that there is a charge incantation for that I have for each of these Sabbath blends. And I will go ahead and make a blog post and I will link it in the description box so that you can go get the recipe and the charge uh, at my at my blog just to kind of make it easier because I don't really like to go into charges uh, and things like that on camera. Um, I think it it just it doesn't feel necessarily right in this instance. So look for the blog post below and and go check that out. And actually, I'll probably do a post that has all of these in case you wanted to save them and put them in your own book of shadows. How's that? So uh, so yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. If you liked it or learned something from it, then give it a thumbs up, to ching. Um, and if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel. Hello. It is so fun here. At least I think it's fun. <laughs> um, that's going to be it for this video. Make sure to check out the links in the description box for mine and Ka my and Kathy's. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyhow, um, social media links. Check those out. And I'd like to hear comments. Do you have a recipe for Sabbath incense that you like to use? I'd like to hear about that. Uh, and yeah, what do you, how do you celebrate Litha? Let me know. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching and thanks for taking the time to walk the path a little while with me. Until next time, blessed be.